Hi everybody and welcome to the world of Micah. I am in downtown Orlando, Florida, currently waiting for my buddy Adam from the Daily Woo. We are going to be traveling around Orlando today, finding some filming locations from different films that were shot here during the Hollywood East era of Orlando. From the early 80s to the late 90s, they did a ton of filming in this area and I've documented this stuff before but there always needs to be more documentation of all the locations and films and TV shows and everything they did here in Central Florida because without these videos it would all be erased from existence I guess you could say we're gonna be seeing filming locations from Problem Child 2, Ernest Saves Christmas, Daryl, all kinds of stuff today this is gonna be a ton of fun and you guys are gonna get to tag along now Let's take a closer look. Starting off the day by meeting up with a good friend, Adam from the Daily Woo. Adam the Woo here standing right next to Mr. Jason Voorhees. We stopped off to see the DeLorean. I've been wanting to come out here and see this. They have a huge mural dedicated to Back to the Future and Jason Voorhees. And the reason they have Jason Voorhees here is because this area is known as Crystal Lake. They have a Crystal Lake shopping center. They actually have a Crystal Lake here and we are off of Crystal Lake Drive. So I'm, I know why they put the Say Anything Voorhees here, but we were also intrigued by this, the Back to the Future mural. Not sure what the tie-in to this is, the artist is never 1959. Adam mentioned that he does a lot of these murals out in Southern California, and I guess he made it to Central Florida as well. This is here at Floyd's Barbershop. They have several of these, and I've shown another Floyd's Barbershop when I did my Mr. Rogers video. So whoever gets a Floyd's Barbershop, they always do some kind of huge mural on the side of the barbershop. And the other mural they have here, is McFly at the Enchantment Under the Sea Dance with Marvin Berry and the Starlighters. Look at that, digging in to Johnny B. Good. It's kind of awesome, but we're gonna be venturing out and finding some locations in Central Florida that were used in films. So our first location is right here off of Cayley Avenue at Cayley Elementary. This was the school that was used in Problem Child 2, as well as Daryl. In fact, John Ritter pulled his, his vehicle right up there to get Junior out on his first day of school. He actually had to remove the seat completely to get Junior to get out of his, his seat. This was the school for Problem Child 2. Still a school. Haley Elementary is what this school is. And also, this was the school that was used in the movie Daryl. So two Orlando films, same school. Kind of interesting. What was also interesting, Adam and I were talking about Back to the Future. The principal in Problem Child 2 was the principal in Back to the Future. But this was the school used in both Daryl and Problem Child 2. It's pretty crazy. Also something I found interesting, they have satellites here at the school, just like they did in the film. When Murph dropped one and it fell, he was trying to have it fall on Junior, but it fell on John Ritter. And our next location is the Healy residence. Address was 911. And here it is, the house from Problem Child 2. This is where, where Ben and Junior Healy moved in. Pretty awesome. They came down this drive right here. It was a, a opening scene of them driving right down here and they pulled in to this house. It has changed a little bit as far as the, the paint, as you guys can see. It was a white house with, with blue exteriors there, but what's cool is the front door, that is still the same and the, the brick path is still the same as well. Where the car is parked was a screened in area during filming, but next door to the Healy residence were the twins who were selling the, the lemonade. You guys know what Junior did to that lemonade, right? And they're actually selling that house. That's kind of cool. And then the neighbor's house down the street here is where the big barbecue explosion happened. Uh-oh. Oh, I saw the truck for a second, and I thought those were the guys, <laughs> the dog food 
that helped Nippy. Remember the guys who brought the food for Nippy the dog? Oh yeah. <laughs> right over here is where Junior was, was feeding the geese, which is a very common thing in Orlando. We do have a lot of swans, a lot of geese, a lot of different birds. There's some ducks over there, but this is where he was standing and throwing the bread in. You want to go out Friday night? How about Saturday night? He's really upset because his dad was going on all these dates because he was single. Pretty cool, man. The problem child two house. It's funny walking down this street, I always think of the song, Only the Strong Survive, as they were driving down the road here. One of the first filming locations in Florida I ever saw, thanks to this man here. I was a new resident, and we were hanging out one day, he was like, you wanna go see the Problem Child 2 house? And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so thanks to you. A long time ago. A long time ago, man. Like seven, eight years ago. Time flies. All right, we're out of here to the next location. The one thing I do like about the, the Orlando area, the benches they have all say Orlando on the bottom. No telling how old this bench is. And you come out to certain areas, you can get a little bit of peace and quiet, as long as you don't mind the sound of a buzz saw and some bugs. But it's pretty, it's pretty peaceful, I will say. And just looking down this street, I could be anywhere USA. I mean, honestly, I know why they filmed down here in the 80s and 90s. This looks like, almost like South Pasadena, California, in a way, where they filmed a ton of 80s films. But the next location we are going to is right up the, the way here from the 1985 film starring Barrett Oliver and Michael McKean, Daryl. Now, if you've never seen Daryl, I highly recommend checking out this film. Great 80s film killer cast and if you would like to see a good filming location i always promote this adam did a fantastic job hunting down all the locations from this film over on i believe it was over on the adam the woo channel but walking down the street here daryl's house it's right over here and his best friend turtle their house was right here i have a few photographs to show just so you guys can get an idea of what this looked like back in 1985. So here we are looking at Daryl's house. Not much has changed. The, the door used to be the same, I believe, actually looking at this, this is the door. It's got the same handle in the middle and everything. And I showed last time where the, the light was in the front of the house is the same. Now Daryl's window was the top left window. That was the, the bedroom of Daryl's. And the house next door pretty much looks the same. It's kind of cool. There's a car in the driveway, just like my, my screen grab there. But what's interesting is the tree in the front yard, such a baby tree back in 1985. That thing has definitely grown up since 1985. And where Adam is standing is right next to his best friend, Turtle. Turtle was such a typical 80s kid with his denim cut off jacket. Oh, yeah. Kept walking back and forth. Yep. Right up here, I have a photograph we can show of Turtle and his mom crossing the street. It's Turtle's house, right here. It's pretty cool. Even that tree to the far left is still there. I think they use the interiors of this house behind you? More than likely. I'm thinking they would, why wouldn't they? Back in those days, it was kind of common. Baseball was something they definitely did in the film in several scenes, right over here, Michael McKean. Daryl and Turtle were playing some baseball and there was a shot looking back at the house. You can see the, the three characters there and the house. That's kind of cool. It all took place right here. In fact, I think this tree right here, this big tree here is the tree right there next to Turtle. It's definitely grown, that's it. Camera crew would have been right here in this yard, which is pretty big for a, uh, a camera crew to sit at. Pretty awesome. How long ago was it when you did your locations? I would spent probably eight years ago. Eight years ago. Well, that's all we have for Daryl's house and Turtle's house from the 1985 film, Daryl. I think we're gonna continue on with our filming location journey. This is a lot of fun. I did this not too long ago. I like to revisit it from time to time. These are classics. 
A lot of these are deep cuts. But like I said at the beginning of this film, if Adam and I or whoever didn't come out here and document this stuff, it would probably be erased. No one would ever know about it. So this was the baseball field used in Daryl as well. That's where all the, the baseball scenes were shot. Right over here is home plate. And what's interesting about this, although it has been updated and changed since 1985, the trees in the background pretty much still look the same in this shot. Bunch of trees back there that are definitely the dead giveaway. And this is the, the bleachers right here where Daryl's team and all of his supporters were sitting, the parents of the kids. They were in these bleachers right here. There's a shot of Daryl and his mom from those bleachers. It's also the shot where Turtle was up here talking to Daryl while the kid was at bat. Right there. Pretty awesome. This was the baseball field used in Daryl and also Parenthood with Steve Martin. This was the same baseball field area, same park that was used in Parenthood. Kind of awesome. So Adam just discovered that this is the field, the same one they used at Daryl. From what I could tell, it's the same one. That's cool, man. Notice how we're in the shade? Yep. It is hot outside. It's extremely hot, and it's not even noon. Ooh, Florida summers. Warm. Warm. <laughs> the one thing about these baseball fields is it just, it's such a perfect backdrop for a filming location. You got the houses in the background, so you get that natural look and feel. And it's quiet out here. Perfect for a filming. It's pretty nice to have some of these trees too. These trees are definitely helpful because it is hot like we keep saying here. But I think that's it for the Daryl filming locations. I think we're gonna move on to a com completely different film right now. And our next location is probably one of my favorite films of all time, starring one of mine and Adam's all-time favorite actors, Jim Varney. Ernest Saves Christmas. That's right, right down the street here is where Ernest lived in the 1989 John Cherry classic, Ernest Saves Christmas. Pretty amazing. I did the filming locations a long time ago, as well as Adam. Every time I'm in this area, I always try to stop by and see Ernest's house. Here it is, Jim Varney's house. Ernest saves Christmas. You can see all of his decorations and everything he had in the yard, and there it is. Now, Adam and I came here not too long ago, and we were doing our Beefy King episode, and he's actually wearing his Beefy King shirt today. We didn't film it. We were just hanging out, but we are here today because Adam mentioned this potentially could be getting torn down, or they could just remodel the whole thing. I'm not sure what they're doing, but it's going to make me sad. During the Christmas season, I, you know, visiting Lake Eola, not too far from this area and stuff, I would drive over and see this house and it always put me in the, the Christmas spirit. This was the, the house from Ernest Saves Christmas. They never get old, they always stay new. Those three little words, please, please and thank, thank you. you. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> so Adam was just saying, we don't really see anything that says no trespassing. And I think the, the house is completely abandoned. So we're just going to walk over here. Security cameras in use. Oh. This is as far as I'm going to go. But that's the porch there. Yeah. This is where Jim Barney and Harmony walk out. In fact, this door, this door you see over here, you can see when the camera is inside there looking out that door. That is so neat. Yeah, there was a Santa Claus on that door right there. And it was a Christmas wreath right below the security camera sign. And then he had that huge, I think it was a bass or a marlin yeah. on the side of the house there. But yeah. And then over here was where the boat was where she took Santa's sack out. If that's Santa's sack, then why do you have it? It's almost like his kitchen and the living room are in the same room because she wakes up on the couch and Ernest is in the, the separator of the room making the, the flat, right. revisiting right. his old commercials where he'd yeah. throw them up and All they the would, old commercials they would stick. The he also burns his fingers, puts his hand on the, yeah. the oven. I like lots and lots of butter. Go. One last scene 
you're standing. This is where the truck, Santa, they backed out right there. Oh, they sure did. And then they took off. When I came, I came over here years ago and did my locations, he and the, the owner, owner. yeah, met the owner. And he said, when they were filming, they came in, and they basically rented out the house from him for the day. They had all this stuff set out in the, in the driveway here in the main road, like a track system for the camera. And he said it was pretty awesome. He got to meet everybody, meet Ernest. They gave his family some, some movie tickets and stuff, and that was it. He was really excited. He was really, really excited that I was into Ernest. And I got lucky. He was doing yard work, and I walked up and said, Hey, your house was used in Ernest Saves Christmas. I'm doing a little filming of the locations. Do you mind me standing here in your front yard and taking photos? He had no problem with it whatsoever. Probably one of the nicest guys I've ever come in contact with while doing locations. Hi, kitty. That cat's name is Ernest. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Are you Harmony? Harmony Star the cat? <laughs> it's a pink collar, so I'm guessing you're a girl. Are you following Adam? Adam the Woo's Wild Kingdom still exists. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last time I see this house. Thanks for the memories. I'm glad I got to visit it with Adam because it means the world to both of us. So, goodbye. So back in 1992, Mel Gibson, Danny Glover were here. And they were filming Lethal Weapon 3. And they blew up City Hall. And it was actually a real implosion of this building. And they used it in the film. And right behind me is the area where they blew up City Hall and Lethal Weapon. It's pretty awesome. Kind of difficult to match up some of the stuff because a lot of this stuff has changed. But for the most part, we kind of found the area of where it was because City Hall, the new City Hall, is still here. So where we are standing is exactly where that explosion happened and the building to the right behind the big explosion is this building right here. Still looks fairly similar. Walking up closer to it you can see it still has the the sections has different levels I guess you could say. This is pretty cool. Lethal Weapon 3. So where we are standing right here this is where the explosion happened. All were Adam standing right next to Dr. Phillips Performing Arts Center there. This is the City Hall. That's right there next to my thumb. I'm gonna go over here and show you where everything is on it so you can kind of get an idea. So if you look up, there's three sections. I think this little front part here is new, but there's one, two, three and then it goes straight up right there, the different levels of the city hall. And that's it, they ran out, grabbed the cat, and they ran across the street, right over there. Pretty insane, man. And this was a historical thing, like they actually did implode this building. Adam was telling me that he actually watched it on live television, like he watched the news coverage of the building being torn down and they just used it in the film. So you said you uh, watched this happen on? Live on TV. That's yeah. crazy, man. It was so uh, wild. October of 91, I had to look that up. I knew it was late 90s, approaching the 30th anniversary. And Richard Donner, who just passed away, he was right here too. Wow. Richard Donner did a lot of stuff, Superman 1, yep. Goonies. Goonies, I know him yeah. from Goonies. Richard Donner, also a Lethal Weapon franchise. Yeah. Is that right here? Mel Gibson, Danny Glover. Grab the cat. <laughs> We're ending the day here at this Publix that has been redone, but this little mechanism of the architecture here is like the only thing that still remains from the Steve Martin, Keanu Reeves, Diane Weiss, Rick Moranis film. Ron Howard actually directed this film, Parenthood, that was filmed here. This is the, the public shopping center that Keanu Reeves and his, his girlfriend <laughs> visited the, the photo booth and got their, uh, their photos back and it was not the photos they thought they had took. Her mom had gotten those photos and it was of her without any clothes on. Looking at some of the photos here, the Publix has definitely changed. That's for sure, but they were around in this area here. Keanu Reeves was wearing a weird hat, a little cool trucker hat, I like it. But it has been redone, and there used to be a bakery and everything here, and a pharmacy. There still is a pharmacy, but the Publix has changed quite a bit. But the, the photo 
stand where you, you know, the 24 hour photo stand was somewhere around in this area here. And to the, the left of them, if you continue walking down, you can see this building I'm showing you right down here where Adam is. But this is the Publix from Parenthood. Pretty awesome. Still has a retro look, but it has been changed considerably. Right over here, this building is straight ahead, right there. They've changed this a lot. And this is interesting because this is the second movie in Central Florida area that used a, a Publix. Edward Scissorhands used a Publix and Parenthood used a Publix. So we were told, can't film here at this Publix. So if you choose to come down here and film, they will tell you not to, which is weird. I filmed at many Publix. I actually did a whole video about Publix and the Publix Facebook group praised that video and they shared my video but this gentleman here was not happy about us filming on this Publix property weird people are weird they're hiding something in this Publix <laughs> but you can stand over here and film it because you're not on the property so this is the cool Publix market that was used in Parenthood has a really cool retro thing I get it there's been some weird things with videos and TikToks and people messing with people inside grocery stores that's probably why we're not doing anything of that sort. We're literally doing filming locations. Harmless things, but I get it. Policy is policy. No harm done, and we're still cool, Publix. I will still buy pub subs from you in the future. But I think our adventure for today has come to an end. This was a lot of fun traveling around Central Florida with Adam, revisiting some of the spots that we first got to do when we first became friends and hung out. True. It's kind of nice. It was a lot of fun, but I think our adventure has come to an end, which means it's time to say goodbye. If you enjoyed this episode, please click the thumbs up button, and I will see you guys on the next one. Until then, stay weird. Goodbye.